St. Helens is that the uh, smoke got in the atmosphere. It didn't just stay in Washington State. It went all across the country and across the world. Uh, some of the things that are, are being determined in the world will affect you and affect us. But that being said, we're going to go to uh, the book of Luke chapter 21 and I want to... Uh, Begin reading verse 28. I'm going to ask uh, Brother, if he would read Luke 21 and 28. And you want to write it down, call somebody, because we want to make sense of the time that we're in. Amen. Yes. And when these things began to come to pass, then look up and, and lift up your hands. For your redemption draws nigh. Okay. I have a chessboard displayed because I want to make this point that as far as good and evil is concerned, as far as heaven and earth is concerned, they are not playing chess but checkers. Now, that's just uh, something that the Lord gave me in the spirit over a year ago that between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of, of light, there is a fulfillment of prophecy. Let me, let me, let me start by saying this, <clears throat> that God is in control. What he did, in fact, when we think of prophecy and those things, he wrote the end from the beginning. He put it in a book, and then he dares Satan to make it come out any other way because he's God. That's how he proves he's all-powerful, he's sovereign. He wrote the end from the beginning. Satan is the one that has a secret agenda that we have to watch and see. That's the devil. Oh, Satan is moving right there. But God put his whole plan when he was going to move. Everything is moving according to his time. He put it in a book, wrote the end from the beginning, 
because if you read in the, the Old Testament prophecies, it talk about these days. Then he shoved the book in Satan's face. Now I dare you to make it come out any different. See, so we are the ones, the inhabitants of the earth need to be mindful of the time and the season that we're in. So it is true. God has everything under control. But does he have you? Does he have your complete focus? Does he have the attention of your house? Does he have the attention of your church? Does he have the attention of your siblings? Does he have the attention of your enemies? Does, you know, so yes, God is in control. And I hear Christians say that a lot of times, but they say it with a kind of uh, dismissiveness that, well, I'm not worried about that because I'm still going to be blessed. Okay, if God wanted us to have that attitude, he never would have given us the future from the beginning because he wants us to watch. How can you watch if you're not reading the instructions? So when people say, watch and pray, what are you watching? What are you looking at? What are you watching? Most of us have relegated watching to looking at an individual to make sure that individual don't get over on us. I'm watching you. I'm watching that person. I don't believe they're real. They're not a real Christian. I mean, God, God is broader than that. He wants us to, because we are the salt of the earth, we're a city on a hill that cannot be hid. He wants us to walk, think, and act like Jesus did. He died for the whole world. He wants your prayers in this season to go from just your house and your three kids and two grandkids. He wants you to pray on a global way. Pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But pray for the nations of the world. Pray for Ukraine. Pray for Russia. Pray for Israel. Pray for Iran. Pray for China. Pray, pray. You just can't pray for you and, and your finances and you can make your rent this month and let your mama get well and all those things are important. But God wants us to become part of the bigger picture. Amen. So here at the Eschatology Roundtable, we try to focus in a broader way. So it's not about how big your ministry is. You know, if you got, you got you know, how big your church is. Uh, it doesn't matter how big the church is, it's too small. Amen. You can have 5,000 members, but the church is too small because he is trying to get us to focus on kingdom and not church. Amen. So the scripture says here, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. So as we look around, and we see that good and evil is playing chess, playing chess with our lives. We don't just bury our head in the sand. We look up. We start realizing that any day now, our Lord and Savior could return. Any moment, he could return. Do I have sins and things that I need to repent from? And that means to turn from. Is there people in my life? that I need to pray for or I need to dismiss in this season? Is there someone trying to make me stumble? How, where am I stumbling? Am I lukewarm? Am I cold? Have I finished the work that he gave me to do? If I had to stand before him tomorrow, would uh, it be in honor or dishonor? See, so this is what he says when uh, uh, these things begin to come to pass. Then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws now. This is not a time to go find new sins to get involved with, okay? Right. If you've been living in sin, what we call living in sin, you're living with someone, you're not married to them, and, and if y'all break up, you ought to celebrate and don't live with nobody else <laughs> until you get married. Yeah, this ain't time for finding a new girlfriend and a new boyfriend and continuing old sin with a different person. <clears throat> if you're trying to get free of 
different things, alcohol and drugs, and you get free, this is not time to find new buddies that like to do that. Because your redemption is drawing nigh. Does that make sense? If God gets you out of a situation with someone that you shouldn't be in with long-term engagement, five years, ten years, and y'all still can't get to the altar. I mean, just call me. I'll meet you up here anytime, and we can fix that. You, I mean, you ain't got to have eight, nine bridesmaids to get that done. Y'all can do that later. But this is a time that if you're going to, the Bible said, be filthy, be filthy still. So is that serious? Brother, you have anything? Well, like you said, it, it, like you said, the uh, Egyptians draw nigh, and, and like you said, it's, it's time for, because he's coming. Yeah. And we know that since he's coming that we need to, uh, he said, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, we need to look on him. He said, set aside every sin and weight that so easily beset us. Yeah. And so right now, like you said, again, it's not a time to, uh, you know, to get uh, lax days because, like you said, it is a chess game. It's stuff yeah. that's going on. There's, there's. We, first of all, we know life is harder itself, and and why make things even harder? You know what I mean? Why with sin or or resisting? He, he said, if you you need God's not mocked. Whatever you sow, you, that that you reap. Yeah. And so why make it hard when you know and and resist resist the Father? When he's trying to make everything, he wants the best for you, but at the same time, you resisting and making it hard. And so, at the same time, um, what I'm saying though that he he we know he's coming, and so it, yes. it's best just to uh, to uh, just allow the Lord to help us and to move us in that right direction where we need yeah. to go to. But uh, but like I said though, again, it, it, it's, it's best to submit ourselves to Him. Amen. Amen. Romans 8 and 22, uh, we want to read Romans 8 and 22, and again, write these down, you can go study them later, and uh, if you have any questions, if, if you can't uh, contact anyone else, contact us, but we, we'll love to give you further information, we don't want to lead nobody astray, but Romans 8 and 22 says, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travail in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Now, this scripture says that what we are seeing in the earth is creation is groaning. Right. Uh, there's a scripture, <coughs> excuse me, in Joel that say the cattle are perplexed and the beasts, they groan. All the earth is groaning. And, and groaning means that there is something that we want that this world can't give us. And so <coughs> the Apostle Paul writes here, it's the redemption of our body. So when we see these wars and see all of the confusion, uh, James says, well, let's, let's look at the book of James real quick. James chapter 4, I believe it is. But uh, There's a reason for war, and there's a reason for this dysfunction that is in the earth. But know that all creation, every person, you and I, we're groaning. And one of the mistakes that we have made, we're going to go to James chapter 4. One of the mistakes we have made uh, in in kingdom is that we have spent so much time dealing with the groanings of the the body who that won't come into maturity as full statue sons of God people groaning because in their department uh, things are not right people groaning because uh, uh, we need more Gatorade in the youth church you know people groaning for you know, because they didn't get recognized, they get attention. People groaning because um, they, th they think more highly of themselves than they are. But we need to ask ourselves, what is the spirit groaning for in the earth? And we, evidently, it's not for bigger 
sanctuaries. I mean, who's building a new building in your town? If so, it's almost a miracle. Where do you see a brand new church building going up today? The spirit is not groaning for bigger sanctuaries and, and coliseums and places where men put their names on monuments. The spirit through us is groaning for a, a revival where we are so changed that Jesus comes again. See, where we spend a lot of money and a lot of time in keeping the saints comfortable. Not saying anything to them about sin because we need them to help pay the bills. Being seeker friendly rather than focusing what is heaven saying. Heaven is saying it's time to get before a holy God and groan for the redemption of your body completely. Because if not, the, the men in the earth are poised to destroy it. They're talking nuclear weapons right now. And, you know, people don't have a concept as to the type of language that speaks of. That means vaporizing cities. If you're an oligarch and you got a bunker that's two miles in the ground and you got all your gold, gold bullion stacked in a bucket and you can get your foe and no more down there, why should you worry about the peons like us? Because your deal is if we destroy the whole world, it's just going to be less of us, and I got plenty of money to start a new world. That's the mindset of these tyrants. But they're talking nuclear weapons, see. And somebody said, well, I'm not afraid. I'm not asking you to be afraid. I'm not suggesting that we be afraid. But to look up for your redemption draws nigh, and soon your body is going to receive the total redemption uh, that um, Jesus died for. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> excuse me, in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 1, uh, brother, would you read uh, the first three verses? Okay. This is why we have war in the earth. Go ahead. Okay. From whence come wars and fightings among you? <clears throat> come they not hence even of your hosts that war in your members? He says, "Ye lust and have not, and have not. Ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and fight and war, and ye have not because ye ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your own lusts." Read, uh, read four, also. Okay, please. ye adulterous and adulterous. Know ye, know, know ye not that the, the, the friend of the world is an enemy with God? Henceforth, therefore, we will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Okay, wars come because you can't have your way. That's what he's saying, mm -hmm. verse 1. Where the wars and fightings come? They come not even hence of your lust that war in your members because we can't have our way. Russia can't have its way. The U.S. can't have its way. But it comes down to a scale that it can even be within our family. Within, uh, between siblings, between spouses, between uh, strangers. We got to have our way. You know, we will, we will war over a handicapped spot. Yeah, you know, I thought you was handicapped and you couldn't walk. Yeah. But pull in front of <laughs> somebody and they'll forget the, all about that artificial leg. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get out they, and whoop they, you with that cane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, use that artificial leg to whoop yeah. you. <laughs> and you know, yeah, but you lust and you have not. You kill and desire to kill and cannot obtain. So even after you've got done killing somebody with your mouth or killing somebody with, with a gun, you're still not going to get what you, what you wanted, mm -hmm. you know. But he says, and, but you ask and you don't receive it because you ask a miss or you ask Amos. You ask for the wrong reasons, that you may consume it upon your lust. See, the, and we have made God a God that if we asked him for things that we're lusting for, all we have to do is believe it and receive it, and he'll give us things that he's lusting for. So we made God 
according to Luke chapter 1, if your heavenly father being good know how to give you good gifts, how much more, excuse me, if your earthly father being good know how to give you good gifts, how much more should your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? So what we've done is made God more evil than our earthly father. Because your earthly father, if he love you, is not going to give you something you lusting for that's going to hurt you. See? And so the believers now are having to know God for who he is, and he's not just the big Santa Claus in the sky. See? Because you brought nothing into this world, you're going to take nothing out. So right now, our focus should be on fellowship with the Holy Spirit Amen. because the redemption of our body is at hand. Everybody is not going to die and go to the cemetery. Just ask yourself, 350 Ukrainians on the 23rd, they were going about their business. On the 24th, they're dead. Right. Amen. And so Europe is talking. We're going to talk about war here. That's why I want to set this up. Europe is talking about war. There hasn't been a war in Europe since World War II. Mm -hmm. And w Europe is talking about war. They've done for the first time, they've released the NATO army. Amen. They, uh, they're releasing them. They're calling them up. They're, they're fortifying countries like uh, Romania and uh, some of the countries that are in West, Eastern Europe. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Eastern Europe. And they're getting ready because they're talking nuclear. Now, why are they talking nuclear? Because the America is talking about cutting off their electricity or messing with them in cyber. The Russians take that as a provocation. And, and that's why Putin is actually, you can, you can Google this and you'll hear him say it. He's going to, he's getting prepared to turn the United States and Europe into radioactive ash. So. The Bible doesn't tell us just disregard that because we're in the great state of America, great country of America. It tells us to look up for our redemption draweth nigh. Look up, pay attention for our redemption draws near. So uh, when we hear about wars and rumors of wars, the assignment of the believer in the earth is to pray, pray without ceasing. No, you may not be physically kin to some of those people, but if we don't pray for those kings and rulers who have power, it's going to affect us. Amen. So uh, that's, that's where I want to start uh, to go further here. Now, we're going to go to Psalms 83. <coughs> Psalms 83. And uh, I want to bring up something that is not being uh, spoken, but it's very important that uh, we should uh, pay attention to. Now, when I say we're playing chess and not checkers, Satan is the master at playing this game to get more souls in his kingdom. The Spirit also spoke to me some time ago and said, uh, that uh, they're playing for all the marbles. The kingdom of darkness is pray, playing for all the marbles. If you ever played marbles, the, ga the name of the game is get as many marbles as you can. So the reason uh, people can't get out of addictions, people can't get away from evil, is because Satan also has sent his troops, his dark troops, into the earth so that they can become a stronghold keeping you from advancing the kingdom of God. See, what's going on in the world is the same thing that's going on in the spirit realm. What's going on in the spirit realm? We got an evil dictator, Mr. Putin. Most of the world admire him. He is said to be the richest man in the world. We thought it was a Saudi Arabian king, but it's Putin. And what is he doing? He's trying to keep one country from advancing their policy. And so that's what Satan is doing. If, he, if you're in something that you can't get out of, it's because Satan has sent forces against you to keep you there 
so that you eventually will give up, you eventually will die in your sin, you eventually will uh, be in hell with him. See, so as go uh, heavens, so go the world. But here's what uh, we hadn't heard a lot about, but this actually happened because chess is being played. Why Putin and Ukraine are fighting and is and United States and Europe is is facing east looking at Ukraine Ukraine thinking about whether we should uh, send troops in and and how many planes we're going to loan them or whatever what does China do China makes a move on Taiwan if you ever played chess what you do is one side of the board you move over here so you can get them focused over here. So you can capture that king, that queen, uh, 